I've kind of been on a mopping robot kick lately because, you know, vacuum robots are boring now. They all do the same thing and they all do it fairly well. But mopping robots are different because this is kind of an emerging technology and there are a lot of new uh, and different approaches to mopping and this Narwhal T10 is an excellent example of that. This robot has a base station that has a clean water reservoir and a dirty water reservoir. It doesn't actually carry any water on board. Instead, what it does is it, those spinning brushes get cleaned well with clean water in, the, um, in its station. And whenever it senses that it's out of water, I think it's actually on a timer. I don't think there's a sensor. It goes back and the brushes are washed again and that saturates them. And then it goes out and does its cleaning. This actually sounded like a really neat idea. And while I wasn't about to pay $1,000 for this thing, since I already have robot mops, I was able to borrow it from a friend for a week and give it a thorough test. Now this is not just a mopping robot, it's actually a mop and a vacuum, uh, but the vacuum doesn't have any sort of spinning brush. Now I thought that this would make it completely worthless, but as it turns out, and as I'll show in later videos, it's actually a pretty good vacuum for hard floors, uh, which kind of shows me that you don't really need spinning brushes for hard floors, but obviously it's completely worthless on carpet. To change it over from a mop to a vacuum, you either have to clip in um, that vacuum attachment or remove that and put in the um, spinning uh, mop pads. Now it does have a dustbin uh, that you have to empty yourself. It's a pretty good dustbin. It does a good job of separating the um, dirt from the filter, uh, like a cyclonic dustbin on larger vacuums, and I'll show you how, um, how that works later. Um, but as far as a vacuum goes, this docking station doesn't do anything. So you have to empty the thing yourself like um, basically any type of normal vacuum. Um, now it has a clean uh, water reservoir that you fill. And the dirty water reservoir obviously fills itself, which you then have to empty periodically. So dumping the dirty water and um, adding fresh wa clean water is basically the only maintenance that you have to do to this robot. Uh, that is, if it's used in mop mode. I actually don't think that um, this is a particularly useful vacuum. If, if this is your only robot and you don't have any sort of vacuum robot, then sure, yeah, it's, it's a lot better than nothing. And it basically works as well as any other robot vacuum um, without an auto-empty docking station, provided you have hard floors. It probably won't pick up some of the fine debris because it doesn't have a spinning brush. Um, but overall, as I'll show in later videos where I test the functions, it, it does really well. But as a mop, the fact that all you have to do is fill this water thing and dump out the dirty water thing without having to actually clean the robot, um, that makes it kind of kind of neat because you don't have to deal with you know dirty brushes or dirty pads or anything like that. Um, if it's a contest between the BravaJet M6 and this robot as far as which is easier to uh, keep going, um, it's kind of a toss-up. I guess it's, it depends on what you prefer. If dumping dirty water and filling clean water is easier than, you know, swapping out a pad and filling a small water reservoir, then, you know, you'll like this one. And if the other thing sounds easier, you'll like that one. But overall, I'd say the, the prep or maintenance uh, are comparable. Now, when you do position your uh, base station, don't make the mistake I made. Uh, and don't put it under something because these water containers are not uh, leak proof. So you've got to make sure that there's nothing above it. That way you can put them in there. Now I'm going to try to send it home by pressing the home button on the docking station and I'm going to reveal a little quirk. The docking station goes passive uh, after a couple of minutes and when you push a button all it does is wake it up. So if you want to send the robot home for example, you have to push the home button twice. Once to wake it up and the other time to uh, send it home. The robot is in the base station. For the setup process was straightforward. Um, once I had that done, I um, sent it out on a mapping run, and it took about 10 to 15 minutes to map my house. Um, it doesn't clean anything. I mean, it, it you know the vacuum's active, but it doesn't actually like go over your entire floor. It just goes to uh, every room, uses its lidar to map it, and creates a pretty good map. Once it has a map, you um, can label rooms uh, and divide them and so on and so forth, just like a typical uh, vacuum or mopping robot. 
The uh, room dividing feature was pretty straightforward, um, some a little bit cumbersome and slightly unintuitive, but very easy overall. Um, one thing that bothered me a lot was that the um, the, the room labels are, are set and there's very few of them. This is something that um, was a problem with the early versions of the Ecovacs app, but they fairly quickly added um, more uh, room types, but not the ability to create custom rooms. This, um, you can't do custom rooms and there's very, very few actual room labels. So I, I actually found myself um, running out of labels and having to e either leave it as room three or two or whatever, or uh, repeat them. Those eight that you see there are the only ones there are, and at first I thought other was a way to make a custom room, like you could name it yourself, but nope, it just calls it other. And if you have more than one room, it just calls it like living room one, living room two. Uh, I, I'm confident that this will be addressed in, in, a, in an app update because it's, it's really, really dumb. Um, they're missing like basic room types, but it's not a huge deal. Um, I don't think that this has very uh, developed Google commands, so it, it doesn't really matter in the end. It's just a matter of convenience. Um, as far as this thing's cleaning performance, uh, in later videos, I'm going to compare it to other robots, uh, measure its wet mopping and dry mopping abilities. Um, but for now, you know, I'm just going to have it do a cleaning job and see how it does and share that with you. So overall, it behaves um, exactly like a LiDAR vacuum robot with a pretty good uh, mo uh, cleaning algorithm. Uh, as I mentioned before, it doesn't actually carry water. So, um, it, and it's actually, it surprised me that how long these brushes stay wet. Uh, and it's whatever timer or sensor it uses to determine that it doesn't have water is usually pretty good. When it's, when you notice um, that it starts to run a little dry, it actually will return to its, um, to its docking station. Um, but it's, like I said, it, it's really shocking how um, much water a simple little mopping pad can carry. Because it, it goes for quite a while, several minutes before um, uh, it returns to the, uh, to the dock. Once it returns, uh, not only do the brushes get saturated, um, but they get cleaned. So it, it spends a few minutes washing those brushes. And uh, after it's done, it goes back out right to uh, wherever it left off. And you could see its trail there um, when it was going back to the docking station. It still had some water on the pads, but um, I guess not enough. So the pads are uh, spring-loaded, so there is some down pressure um, on them against the floor, which is good because that's where um, hybrid uh, vacuum mopping robots usually fall flat, but it's not as much down pressure as something like a BravaJet uh, M6, which will be revealed in the uh, mopping comparison in later videos. So here it is returning to exactly where it left off. And it's, like I said, it has a pretty good cleaning algorithm, so it's, it's very good about uh, picking up where it left off, otherwise this wouldn't be very um, effective at what it does. It does leave a little bit of an of a area untouched around um, furniture legs, uh, but overall it comes pretty close. Uh, I believe it has a time of flight sensor, I'm not certain, uh, on the, uh, the right side of it. So it's able to hog uh, walls and uh, hog, hug walls and stuff pretty well. By the way, I keep saying brushes in this video, but I actually mean pads. Uh, I'm, I'm too used to saying brushes to dealing with uh, robot vacuums. But as you can see, it could cross room dividers effortlessly. And this, I think, is, is one of its best features um, because uh, the BravaJet M6 struggles with even basic uh, floor dividers or room dividers, and this thing just, just comes in like a champ and just goes over them like any uh, vacuum robot. Um, so it, it's incredibly useful. It can get to any part of your house, and it mops very quickly. Despite the, the brush, uh, sorry, pad washing process taking uh, a couple of minutes, um, it's, it actually will mop your house a lot faster than any other mopping robot that I've ever seen. And even though um, it can fit under things, it doesn't always try. Um, it goes around chair legs pretty well. It, it's basically like, think of it as a LiDAR vacuum robot, uh, you know, combined with a pretty good mop. And um, that basically is how I would describe this thing. It's not the greatest mop, uh, mopping robot that you can buy as, as far as you know, its cleaning effectiveness, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, as I'll reveal in later videos, it's almost as good a mop as the BravaJet M6. Not quite, but almost. I would say maybe 80 to 90% is good. Uh, probably closer to 80. 
but it navigates so much better than the Bravo Jet M6, and it can get to every part of your house, you know, on the same floor, that it, it's basically um, a lot more useful than the Bravo Jet M6, and it's a lot faster. Uh, it, it'll mop your entire house maybe three times as fast, uh, assuming that you have a house that the Bravo Jet can even get to. But the Bravo Jet is a better mop. As far as absolute cleaning ability, the M6 is better. Mopping complete. Start to dry the mop. So after it finishes the um, mopping task that it's assigned, it washes the pads one more time and then it goes through this drying process. And I'm not quite sure how it dries it. I think it blows air over it. I wasn't able to figure that out in the time that I had this, this robot. But it does a pretty good job. It doesn't dry them completely, but it dries them enough so that they don't uh, get smelly uh, on a humid day or mildewy. So this is what the, um, the mopping pads uh, look like uh, after it mopped my entire house. Um, this is pretty good. I mean, they're, they're pretty clean. I'm not sure how long they last before you have to replace them, but you could just throw them in the wash. It comes with a spare set, so you could have one set on the robot and the other set in the washing machine. Now that's how much water it used for my entire top floor, and that's the wastewater. It's important to note that it doesn't actually put all the water that it uses onto your floor. It uses a lot of it to clean the brushes. So before I go, I just want to reiterate this point to save my viewers some frustration. Uh, if your docking station goes to sleep like that, uh, the display is dark, whatever button you push, whether it's the clean button or the home button, you're going to have to push it twice. Uh, the first time just to wake it up and the second time to do what you want it to do. So thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Mike and this is Mr. Roombato.